Zaheer and Kuvira are both fascinating villains, but there are certain reasons why Zaheer is the best and others why Kuvira is the ultimate villain. Let's settle this once and for all. You're watching Avatar Discussions, and this is Zaheer vs. Kuvira. First of all, Zaheer fits the airbender mold perfectly. From an athletic perspective, all of the primary antagonists in this saga are great benders, but Zaheer is the only one of them who can bend air, and it's both intriguing and terrifying to see it used in this way. In fact, Zaheer executes one of the few on-screen homicides using air power. He's also an acrobat, which is the perfect match for his airbender skills. When he's finally in combat, he will be a match for even the airbending master Tenzin. While bending is cool and all, sometimes the team behind a villain means just as much. Zaheer's gang of anarchist benders is cool, but they're not a full-fledged military. Kuvira definitely sets the bar for army construction, and it's astonishing that she was able to put together such a sophisticated and well-organized force in just three years. Her armies include earthbender soldiers, mecha suits, armored zeppelins, and more, and her banner will soon be flying throughout the former Earth Kingdom. It's also reminiscent of the old Fire Nation army, but this time with an earthly aesthetic. In order to keep things as fair as possible, we've got to look at Zaheer's team as well. Zaheer's Red Lotus group isn't anything close to being an army. However, considering Zaheer's ambitions and abilities, a small elite crew is all he needs. Regardless, an army would be noticeable, and Zaheer would despise the bureaucracy. Instead, this anarchist uses a lava bender, a combustion firebender, and a scary waterbender to fight. These spies can penetrate any country or stronghold and destroy it from within. When you have a quality like this, who needs quantity? Those four, combined, are capable of defeating any nation. Before we make a final decision on who the superior villain is, let's take a look at their fighting edge. Kuvira commands a sizable army, which includes some cutting-edge technology. She possesses a variety of super weapons, beginning with a gigantic spirit cannon. Kuvira also created a rail-based cannon that could kill an entire village with one shot, using spirit vines and power similar to Vatu's. And if that wasn't enough, she later mounted it on a gigantic colossus, almost bringing Republic City and all of its defenders to their deaths. Her army and her technology definitely give her an edge, because there's so many people needed to get through before you ever get to Kuvira. And as for Zaheer, the trait that pushed him over the edge and allowed him to be the most dangerous in battle is his unpredictability. Making a character unpredictable is a proven method to make them interesting. A character like Zaheer will still have a consistent worldview and objective, but it will be difficult to predict how they would achieve it. Zaheer has no allegiance to any nation or flag, and his only cause is his own. From his midnight assault on Zhao Fu, to assassinating the Earth Queen, to the hostage issue at the Air Temple, he strikes whenever and wherever he can. Zaheer consistently stays one step ahead of his opponents, forcing them to scramble to keep up. So, who is it? Who wins this battle? Well, it's hard to say. Both characters have their positives and negatives, and they both have reason for being amazing villains. If you were to ask who would win, one-on-one, -on -one, we'd most likely say Zaheer. If you asked who would win in a show-style battle, we'd say Kuvira. But there really is no way to say for sure who the better villain is. I guess we're leaving this one up to you. Let us know in the comments below who you believe the better villain is, the revolutionary Zaheer or the militant Kuvira. And until next time, stay flaming.